So in this video, I'm going to walk you through dividing fractions using the area model. So similar to what we've learned with adding, subtracting, and multiplying uh, fractions, um, you always keep in mind that when you have any fraction, so really quickly we'll just go ahead and look at this fraction. If you have any fraction, the first denominator is the number of floors in your building. The second denominator of the second fraction is the number of rooms in your building. So really quickly, if I was to draw this diagram, my building would have two floors, and each floor would have a total of four rooms. The thing to remember with dividing fractions is you need to make two buildings that are identical. So again, not identical in terms of um, size or anything, but just make sure that they do have, if it's two floors with four rooms, that each floor does have four rooms, and they are kind of have the same number of rooms and the same number of floors. Another really cool thing about dividing with fractions is that once you have your fractions and you've put in your numerators into each of the buildings, the first building will always tell you the numerator of your new fraction, and the second building will tell you the denominator of your new fraction. Okay, So keep that in mind as we go through this. So let's look at our first fraction. The first fraction I gave you is 2 over 3 divided by th uh, 4 over 5. And so really quickly, we're going to go through this. And so right away, you should be able to start drawing out this fraction. So if I was to draw out this fraction, again, my building would have a total of three floors, and each floor would have five rooms. There you go. And again, like I said, you have to draw two buildings in this case. So again, my second building also has three floors, and my second building also has five rooms. Now, the first numerator goes into the first building, so I need to show two-thirds. And remember I told you that um, when you're looking at your first fraction, it is the horizontal that you're filling in. So I'm going to be filling in, that's one-third, and that's two-thirds. And in my second building, I'm going to fill in the numerator from my second fraction into this building. And so that is 4 fifths, so that's 1 fifth, 2 fifths, 3 fifths, and 4 fifths. Now the really cool thing about division and using the um, area model is that the first building actually gives you the value of your new numerator. So when you count the number of rooms in this building, it gives you the value of your new numerator. So if you quickly count it, it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So my new numerator is 10. The second building will give me my denominator. Okay, so again, I counted off, so it's 3 and 3, 6. And uh, so you keep counting, and you find out that your fraction is 10 over 12. Now this is... Um, the fraction we have is 10 over 12, and you think, can I reduce it fra this fraction? And you say, yes, actually, I can reduce the fraction. And I simply have to go ahead and... I'm kind of out of space there, so I'm going to write this fraction down here. 10 over 12. And so, sorry, it's just right here. Equals 5 over... Six. Now I'm going to show you using the method that you know when you're dividing fractions and the method that you know when you're dividing fractions is you leave the first fraction the same, you change your sign to a multiplication, you find the reciprocal of the second fraction, that simply means to flip the second fraction, and then when you go ahead and do that you say 2 times 5 is now 10, so you use your rule of multiplication now, and 4 times 3 which equals 12, and I would go ahead again and I'd reduce it and my reduced fraction would be 5 over 6. So at this point I'm going to go through one more example with you and then once I'm done this example you can try the next one on your own. So as you should have already started you're going to start drawing out your building. So you draw out your first bu your, your building and you know that your first building has um, three floors and so I'm going to go put in my three floors. Once I put in my three floors I need to have eight rooms on each floor. It's two, three, four, five, six. I think I need to add one more on there, so I'm kind of short one. Quickly count them off. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. And I need to make another building. Remember the identical size. 
not necessarily the same shape, etc., but as long as it has the same number of floors and the same number of rooms. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that should be eight. Okay, so again, my first numerator goes into my first building, and remember, the numerator of the first one goes horizontally, so I'm going to go ahead and fill that in. So I said one-third in this building, so I go ahead and fill that in, and then I say, again, the numerator of the second building, second fraction goes into the second building, and this one goes down vertically. So, again, one-eighth, which is just, it's colored in right over there, okay? So I went ahead and I, did, I um, put in my fractions. Now I simply have to go ahead and get my answer. And my answer, remember, just very easy. My first uh, building gives me my numerator. So I count out the, the number, and so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And so 8 is my new numerator. And I count down here, and this gives me my new denominator. And so there's three colored in blocks, so that is my new denominator. Now this is an improper fraction, sorry, a mix, uh, sorry, yes, an improper fraction. We have to turn our improper fraction into a mixed fraction. So you have to see how many times can I subtract 3 from 8. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you uh, so that we can review this as well at the same time. So I take 8 and I subtract 3, which gives me with 5. Now again, if I take 5 and I subtract 3, and I'm kind of running out of space here subtract 3, I'm left with a remainder of 2, and I cannot subtract another 3 from there. So I was able to subtract 2 whole 3's, so that means my new whole number is going to be 2. I have a remainder of 2, so that becomes my new numerator. And keep in mind that your denominator always remains the same. So originally my denominator was a 3, so my, de new de my denominator on my mixed fraction is also going to be a 3. So that's your answer, 2 wholes and 2 thirds. Now again, I'm going to show you really quickly using the method that you know. So if I had 1 third, so I leave my 1 third the same way. I multiply, I put a multiplication sign, I find the reciprocal of the second fraction. So 1 times 8 is 8 over 3. And again, if you were to follow the same way that I did down here, you would see that you would have, uh, from this, you would have two holes and two thirds. So this is the question that I want you to try on your own first. So I'm going to ask you to go ahead, write the question down, pause the video, and then come back and see me. Okay, so welcome back. Really quickly, I'm going to go through this. You should have already gone through this, so this should be a very quick one that we go through. So I start drawing my building. My building has five floors and each floor has three rooms and I do the same thing again so you've already done this so you're just kind of reviewing with me to make sure that you have the correct answer so again my building has five floors three rooms my first numerator goes into my first building remember again the first one goes horizontally so I'm filling it in horizontally so four fifths so that's one fifth two fifths three fifths and four fifths my second uh, numerator goes into my second building, and that one goes vertically. So again, that's one third and two thirds. And now the value of the first building becomes my new numerator, so I count it off. I go one, two, three, three and three, six, and I know that that's going to be 12. And I count out my uh, numerator from, sorry, my denominator from my second building. So I counted out, it's one, two, three, four, five, and I know there's two rows of five, which equal 10. So my new fraction is 10 over 12, and again, this is an improper fraction. So I see how many times can I subtract 10 from my numerator. So how many times can I subtract my denominator from my numerator? And I know that I can subtract it one time, because I can't subtract it from two. So that means I have one whole 10, so one whole, and I have, at the same time, a remainder of 2, and my denominator remains the same. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to try this equation using the method of multiplication. You'll see you end up with the exact same answer.